Hey guys, this video is from our latest Rick and Johnny podcast. Make sure to check out the full podcast on blogtalkradio.com backslash Rick and Johnny. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know Johnny and I had fun recording it. And Johnny, we got to move on into our last topic. And this is a first for the Rick and Johnny podcast. This is a first, kind of setting everything up because in July, we're going to be doing episode reactions yep. and talking about this a lot more on the podcast as we've got things to talk about. Finally, yes. But we got Game of Thrones. We're going to be talking about a little speculation on a Game of Thrones topic today. And at first I came to you and said, well, should we talk about kind of the Jon Snow mother theory? Yeah. Of who his mom is, who his lineage is. But really, there's a deeper question that we should ask. Because as we left season seven, by the way, spoilers, 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 spoilers. If you, if have you are not, not seen caught it. up, pause, we'll be here, wait for you. That's what End we of do. season six, we by wait the way. For yeah, end of season six. If you are caught up to the current, to the current ready for season seven, then you're good to go. We're happy to have you. Good thing I did that before I spoiled yes. everything. But where we left everything was Jon Snow and Sansa kind of sitting there ahead of all the houses of the North. Yes. And Little Bear kind of basically telling everyone, hey, you, when he needed you, you didn't show up. Hey, you, when he needed you, you didn't show up. Oh, by the way, hey, you. When you needed someone, who showed up? Yeah, that's right. The Stark showed up. Mm -hmm. Kind of a slap in the face, like, who are you guys? It was like, who cares if he's not a Stark? Per se, well, yeah. I, I use air quotes because he's technically got Ned Stark blood in him yes. through um, his sister. But it's one of those things where because he's a bastard child, oh, shouldn't be king of the North. Can't so they, end, that. they end that with... King of the North, King, King of the, the North, North, kind King of North. pronouncing him the King of the North. Yes. There's a little jealousy, though, with Sansa, because there's a sidebar where little fingers kind of just kind of infusing into her head, hey, you should be queen. It should be queen of the North. You've, you're full blood. You're a full blood Stark. He's a bastard child. And yeah. I get why little fingers doing this, because little finger even said it. I have one image in my head. And when I come to a decision, a yes or no of should I do it, I ask myself, will it make the image in my head a reality? And if the answer is yes, I do it. So this is all him basically trying to get her the top of the north yes. so that she can become the queen of everything. And then he can basically take the throne from her. Swoop in, become Swoop king. Swoop in, become king. She can be the queen right, the queen right next to him. Yeah. Kind of a thing. And this is where I'm going to ask you the simple question heading up into Season 7. Should Jon Snow or Sansa Stark reign over the North and be either the king or the queen of the North? In all honesty, I give it to Jon Snow. Yes, Sansa is a full blood mm -hmm. Stark. But in my opinion, and this is all theory on my part when I go along this. Okay. I feel like, A, like we talked about before the podcast, he is... Ned Blo uh, Ned Stark's sister's mm -hmm. son. Who do I think is the father, though? A Targaryen. Yeah. So and I I mean. So he's got the blood of the dragon running. He's got the blood him. of the dragon running through him. Mm -hmm. Plus he's got the run. He's got Stark blood in him. Mm -hmm. So he should be king of the north. And technically, before king of everything, king of everything, mm -hmm. because before they were overthrown, Targaryens were in charge. So, I mean, he's technically should the one that should be king. Yeah, she's a Stark blood. Starks are of the North. He's got Stark blood, too. It just happens that she's got Stark, Stark blood running through her. Not even. What, I forgot. She's got pure blood. She's got, yeah, we'll call her pure blood. We'll yeah, go with that. Because it's, she's not, and the big thing is, she's not a bastard child. That, too. Because the whole thing with Jon Snow is nobody knows what we know. Exactly. Like nobody in, like, everybody that's there saying King of the North, King of the North, they don't know what we know. We know because of Brand's vision yeah. that, hey, you know what? You're not, you're not our father's son. You wouldn't be my brother. You would be my cousin. Yes. That's what you would be. 
But John, not John Snow, but Ned Stark, when he came back, what would have sounded, it would have been bad, but what would have been worse? Coming back and saying, this is my bastard son, and just living with it? Yep. Or saying, no, this is my sister's son, and having to do with that, because one this of the This is big, my sister's bastard son. Yes. One of the big things you have to think about is, Ned Stark's sister was planned to, or planned, was um, arranged in a marriage to Robert Baratheon. Yes. And we all know Robert Baratheon, not the nicest of guys when you get him a little angry. Yeah. Especially when you see him, I think it was episode one, when you see him and Ned down by, I, I assume it was the gray, or the grave site that they have mm -hmm. for Ned's sister, and just hearing Baratheon talk about her, you're like... I do not want to see this guy if he would have found out because he would have been drunk with blind rage with how much he loved her. Yeah. Especially if it was like a, no, this is not like this guy had sex with my wife. Well, my wife to me and yeah. had this son. He would have killed him. Yeah. John Snow wouldn't have been here today. No. And the thing that we don't know is that in that scene that Bran saw with Ned and his sister, we don't know exactly what she whispered into Ned's ear, but let's be honest. We can all assume that it was basically, please protect my son. Mm -hmm. Please make sure that he's okay. And a big thing is, in every single time that Ned is away and able to, who's there with him? John. Jon Snow. Yeah. It wasn't a whole thing of, hey, I want you to learn with the others how to do things. It was basically, I don't want to keep you out of my sight. Mm -hmm. Because if I keep you out of my sight, I don't know what's going to happen to you. Ned was pretty much um, set on if you made a promise, he kept it. Yeah. And the other thing I want to say is, weren't they, um, when they killed the Targaryens, mm -hmm. were they not trying to kill all of them at when they when they did that? Because I know they were. one of them was sent to the wall. Mm -hmm. The other two were basically exiled. The Well, because at the beginning in season one, you had... Um, Khaleesi and her brother. Yeah, they were, were on the outskirts of. They were across. Yeah, they were across the, the water. Sea, yeah, and they had gotten away because it was the one who killed the king, the Mad King. Yeah, was Jamie, Jamie Lannister. Exactly. And so basically, it was hey, we gotta get out of here, or else they're gonna kill everything. And maybe if they found out that Jon Snow. Was, was part Targaryen. Targaryen. He might have been killed that way. That's so, the other one I wanted to bring so, up. So Ned had to protect Jon Snow. Yes. However, on the other side with Sansa, she technically is true blood. She is true blood. She Stark, technically yeah. is true blood. And this is where it comes into the fact of Jon Snow, to me, I agree with what they were saying at the end of season six. Yeah. It does not matter. It does not matter to me that he is not pure Ned Stark and Catelyn Stark blood. blood. To me, it doesn't matter because he, A, has the Stark blood running through him. Mm -hmm. And everything that he has shown has shown the leader of a king to me. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I mean, everything he goes above and beyond to get everything done. Mm -hmm. And part of that is I know we were watching a um, video from the YouTube channel's Emergency Awesome. And uh, he did a video on Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. and he referred to it as the imposter syndrome. Yeah. Basically, the I'm an imposter, so I have to prove myself. Yeah. I have to prove myself that I fit in, that I am a son of Ned Stark. And part of me is like, okay, you can describe it in that way, but the thing that I kind of go back to, and this is what I think of when it comes to the two— is Jon Snow, to me, is, and you can even think about this in actual politics today. Yeah. Jon Snow, to me, is like the, I don't want to use actual, I was thinking of two in my head, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't go over well. I'm just going to use layman's terms. He's the down-to-earth guy. Yeah. He's the guy that, right now, if you're voting for a president... That I'm voting for that guy because he is just like me. He gets the working class. He gets the the modern man, the modern woman. He he understands the middle class kind of a thing yeah. and what we're going through. That's John Stark. 
because John Stark has been a Snow. person. Snow <laughs> has been. I'm just calling him John Stark because he's Stark. But John Snow, um, he's been trying to prove himself. Yeah. Ever since day one, and he kind of exactly. has that fight, that fight, that fight. Whereas Sansa, she was born. That's it. That's it. She was born, and then boom, she was a Stark. Kind of. She's kind of a silver, silver spoon, spoon child. Yeah, silver spoon in the mouth. Everything, everything you want will be handed to you because you are the princess. You are going to be a queen someday. That kind of a thing. And mm-hmm. I don't want, I don't want it to take away from. Yes, the character of Sansa is a strong character, and she's not as silver spoonish as King Joffrey was. No, she's yeah, she's but she still has that little bit of silver spoonish. Maybe it's bronze. Maybe a bronze spoon. But it's still there where basically the point is she was born into it, never had to work to prove anybody. Exactly. Whereas Jon Snow literally had to prove each and every day. And I know you're not going to get this reference, but I'm bringing a sports reference into it. Okay. Last night before I went to bed, I was watching the 30 for 30 um, on the Bad Boys, which was the Detroit Pistons. Okay. And it reminds me of what they were talking about between two of the players on that team, where Isaiah Thomas kid from Chicago, had to work for everything. Had to work for everything with the shit situation that he was in. Like, he was saying two of his brothers, one one died from HIV from heroin, the other drank himself to death, mm-hmm. and he had to work himself just to get to the NBA where he was. Yeah. Whereas there was a, another player that they traded for that was on that team, Bill Lambeer, he was also from Chicago, but he was from the wealthier side of Ch- the wealthier suburb of Chicago. Dad was an executive, had a lot of money, didn't have to worry about anything. So that's what it kind of reminds me of here. Yeah, where John Snark is uh, John Snow, John Snark, now. Snark, <laughs> Snark, Snark. John Snow is that person who had to work for everything. Yeah. You could call it the imposter syndrome. You can call it just he had to prove everyone wrong, whereas Sansa didn't have to prove anyone wrong. No. Didn't have to do as much as Jon Snow is, and that's why if I was a normal person, I would relate more to, to Jon Snow. Snow as a ruler. Yeah, because, I mean, I understand watching the series, Sansa has been through a lot at this point. Mm-hmm. I get it. She was supposed to marry Joffrey. That one basically was in shit. a marriage with Joffrey. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to handle that. She went to, sh- but that went to shit mm-hmm. as soon as he met a more attractive woman. Yeah, uh, and then the next part was Ramsey Bolton. She was traded off to him after mm-hmm. a while, and we saw how that went with that. Yeah. And yeah, this made her a stronger woman, but that did not does not equate to what Jon Snow has been through mm-hmm. when he lived with the Starks. He Catelyn had to, hated him. Yeah, but Catelyn he, couldn't stand him. He did everything in his. Everything he could to try and prove himself a Stark. And in Mm -hmm. Ned's eyes... He was a Stark. He was a Stark because, I mean, he already knew the truth, but Mm -hmm. John more than proved himself. When he went to the Wall, he proved himself there, too. Not just, like, he he was a great warrior, he did his job anyways, he rose up to, what was the leader of it called? Lord Commander. Lord Commander. (laughs) Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Yeah, and he proved himself a great Lord Commander until Mm -hmm. he was backstabbed by five... Four or five, whoever it was. It was four or five people, whatever. He lived. It didn't matter. Didn't happen. Lived. Didn't happen in my mind. He's magic. Alive. He's alive. It's magic. But he's alive. That's yeah, all that matters. That's all but that matters. It's And I, I'm glad you bring that up because when he went to the Night's Watch, yeah. he could have easily been like, fuck this, and just bitched about it the entire time. Exactly. But he didn't. Where I kind of feel like on the side of Sansa, yes, yeah, she's been through a lot. Yeah. She complains a lot. She does. She complains a lot. Every little bit. And that's what I feel like plays into the silver spoon side to the had to work for everything side. Exactly. And that's why if I was somebody in the North, I would say King of the North, Jon Snow, over Queen of the North, Santa Stark. And the thing I want to kind of end this with before I throw it on to them to let them tell us who they would have reigning over the North right now is season seven is going to be interesting. Seven and eight basically are going to be interesting. Cause I don't know if it's all going to get wrapped up in season seven 
we are going to have a little bit of a rivalry going on. Yeah. Between Snow and between Stark, because like I mentioned at the beginning of the segment, Jon Snow, King of the North, King of the North, they basically the North. kind of re like announced him as King of the North. Littlefinger sitting there, kind of putting the ideas in yeah. Sansa's head, kind of poking her a little bit. I'm gonna ask you this. Give me a prediction. Give me a like uh what are you thinking is going to happen? Between these two in season seven from this point, do you think we're going to get an epic argument? Do you think Sansa is going to try to take the throne away from Jon Snow? What do you think is going to play out? I think um, kind of combining the whole layout of seven and eight Mm -hmm. is going to be something along the lines of Littlefinger is going to keep putting that shit in her head Mm -hmm. and she's going to become more and more jealous because... All the all the other people of the north are following Jon Snow, mm-hmm. and maybe she'll let him do his thing, so she doesn't get have to get her hands dirty. Mm-hmm. And the second it comes around to it, and or some maybe not when it's actually like the resolutions there, when it's like kind of getting near the peak, she's gonna come. Maybe her and Littlefinger, or just her, kind of stab him in the back type of scenario, mm-hmm. or at least try to kind of make this epic argument thing. And maybe at some point, or maybe at some point. Like during that or after it, she'll see you're wrong. He's a great leader. Little fingers just kind of manipulating you. So you're thinking it's going to get to battle, battle, battle to an apex, and then it resolves with them becoming together and being like, "No, we're family. We're in this together." I don't know about them resolving that way. We we know how Game of Thrones can be resolved. Mm-hmm. It could be, yeah, we're family. We it kill could you. be, we kill you. Yeah, some yeah. someone dies. Maybe I, little maybe little finger will meet his end up to that. Part of me, even I remember I when I was watching does. the end of season six, I was like, part of me couldn't understand why Sansa was jealous because you guys are family. You should be like proud of. And I get part of it now thinking about it like you're you kind of have some of that entitlement of, yeah, I am a full blood Stark. You are not like that could be part of it. But I am very anxious about the kind of just not awkwardness, but the tension that we're going to get between the two. And I really don't want anything bad to happen to John again. No, not I again. I don't. Because you know what I really want to happen? This is more so for season eight. Because we do know Daenerys is coming. Mm-hmm. Khaleesi, she is coming. Daenerys is coming. Across <laughs> the sea with her with her fleet. And her dragons. The end of, towards the end of the actual series with season eight, Daenerys, Jon Snow... They got to meet. It has to come to head to head. That head to head of the Dragon Queen and Jon Snow, who we pretty sure has dragon blood in him and yeah. is a Targaryen of his own. How is that going to play out when not only did Jon Snow in the North have to fight off a strong female character for King of the North, mm-hmm. but he might have to fight off a strong female Targaryen for, for the full, Iron Throne. Yeah. So we're going to basically Queen of the Queen of Dragons mm-hmm. versus the White Wolf versus the White Wolf. I would love to see that and I actually like that matchup name. <laughs> what Queen of the North versus the White Wolf? Queen of the Dra- uh, Queen of Mother, Dragons. No, Mother of Dragons yes, versus Mother White Dragons Wolf versus the White Wolf which is Jon Snow but this you, Sunday Sunday Sunday. Do you have any last final remarks? No, about actually, this topic before ex- we throw it to them. I'm both excited and nervous to see what happens because mm-hmm. we all know nobody's safe in Game of Thrones. I'm going to make one last reference to the sports world. And this okay. was yet again another 30 for 30 I watched last night before um, bed. And I'll kind of explain it in layman's terms so Johnny can get it as well. Um, Reggie Miller, one of my favorite players when okay. Michael Jordan went to baseball. When he played the New York Knicks, mm-hmm. he had a point guard, a teammate, uh, Mark Jackson, which was kind of like his hype man, where they would be in New York for a series, and Reggie wouldn't leave the room, wouldn't look at any newspapers, but Mark Jackson would just be sitting there like, 
Reggie, Reggie, do you see? I can't believe they're saying this about you. They're saying that John Stark is a better ball player than you. Now I've played with I've played with John Stark, and I'm teammates with you, Reggie. And I I don't know if that's true. Basically, being his hype man, mm-hmm. being the one to hype him up yeah. so that when he gets to the event, he's ready to go. That's what Littlefinger is right now. Yeah, he is Sansa's hype man. True, where he's trying to hype her up, getting her ready for when that when he is anticipating that clash, that battle comes between Sansa and Jon Snow, and it just makes me anxious. Yeah, makes me very anxious because I just want them to be friends. I yeah. just want them to be friends, John. You guys are on the same. You guys are on the same side. We Your be family. Friends? But this is where I'm going to turn it on to you guys. Let us know down below in the comment section three things. First off, who should reign over the North, Sansa Stark or Jon Snow? Any predictions that you may have for Season 7 and Season 8 of Game of Thrones? And then number eight, is there any theories in Game of Thrones, any topics with Game of Thrones that you want us to talk about? Let us know down below in the comment section. Love talking Game of Thrones and can't wait for it to come back in July. So excited. So that we can do the episode reactions for you each and every week, the Sundays as they air on HBO. But Winter this is, is going to do it actually for the Rick and Johnny podcast. Go ahead and check us out on Twitter. I'm at Ricky Widmer. Johnny is at War Machine 9085. Most Valuable Podcast is at Most Valuable Pod. Also, if you've already hit that like and subscribe button, make sure to check out patreon.com backslash Most Valuable Podcast. Just another way for you to help support the channel rather than hitting the like and subscribe button. Want to thank you guys for listening and watching one more time. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know about this, Rick. Just do it, Morty. Uh, th- th- thank you for watching Most Available Podcast video. If you want to watch more of them, just watch them right here. And th- th- thank you for watching. Mm.